Hi everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and in this video series we're making the Delphinium Hobo Bag. Um, this bag comes in two sizes, a small size and a large size. Um, I have the, the large is, is a bit big for the video, but I do have the small size here. Um, this, just to show you what pockets and features the bag has. Um, so it is a soft body bag. Um, it has on one side on the exterior, it has two large slip pockets and there's a bit of faux piping here. And then on the other side, uh, you have two uh, zipper pockets. They're fairly large, lots of space inside. Um, because it's a hobo bag, I made it with just a regular shoulder strap, but if you want to make it with an adjustable strap, you can go ahead and do that. And then I tried to keep it a little bit simple and it has a double magnetic snap closure. And then inside the bag, you have an additional uh, two slip pockets and a zippered pocket. Now, you have to be comfortable setting grommets. I'm gonna go through setting grommets um, a bit later on in the video series, but you do need to be comfortable setting grommets. And then you have two grommets here and two grommets here. And then uh, there's a gate ring that goes through the grommets and then you clip your strap, the swivel uh, clips of your strap clip onto the gate ring. So I'll set this aside for now. Now, of course, like every other pattern, you're going to want to uh, print out the pattern if you like, uh, but at least read through the entire thing before you start. Um, there is a cutting chart on page three. So if you're not printing out the pattern, you will maybe want to at least print out page three so that you can check off the pieces as you're cutting them out. Now, because the pattern comes in two sizes, you don't have to print out all of the pattern pieces. If you look in the pattern pieces section on page two, it will tell you which pages to print out if you're making the small size and which pages to print out if you're making the large size. Now, in this video, I am making the small size. There is no difference in the assembly from one size to the other. The only difference really is uh, in the cutting chart, some of the dimensions are different. And of course you're printing out and you're using a different set of pattern pieces depending on what size you're making. The only other difference is in your notions. Uh, you'll be using different size zippers uh, depending on if you're making the small size or the large size. So I'm going to just go through what supplies you're going to need. So you are going to need uh, your grommets. Um, I, mine are in millimeters in terms of dimensions, but if you're thinking inches, you want about a half inch inner diameter to make sure that the, uh, the ring of your gate rings goes through the grommets nicely. So you need four grommets and their washers. Okay, and you're going to need uh, two one inch gate rings. If you have only, I know they come in different sizes, just to show you the, as small as one inch will work, but if you have one and a quarter or even one and a half, that's gonna work just fine. And then you're going to need two, sorry, I still have them wrapped in plastic here, two one and a half inch um, swivels to, for your shoulder strap. And then for the main closure of the bag, you're going to need two um, 18 millimeter magnetic snaps. So make sure you have all the parts that you need for the two snaps. And then you're going to need a nine inch zipper. This is just a, a number three or a, a dress zipper with a closed end. Okay, so one nine inch zipper, that's for your interior zipper pocket. And then here's where you have a difference between the small size and the large size. For the small size, you're going to need two 14 inch zippers or 28 inches of zipper tape in total cut in half. And if you're doing the large size, you're going to need two 16 inch zippers or 32 inches of zipper tape in total cut in half. So these are going to be cut down during the assembly. 
um, but to make sure that no one's sewing over uh, the metal zipper stops, I just, I just uh, suggested larger zippers that will then be cut down. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside and then we're going to go over the pieces that you need to cut. Okay, so I'm making the small size, so I only printed out my uh, small size pattern pieces and follow the instructions in the pattern pieces section to tape them together. So the pattern pieces that you should have, there's only uh, six of them. Uh, you're going to have your, and I'm going to grab the bag so that I can show you where these are on the bag. Okay, so for looking at the side with the two slip pockets, you're going to have the main body, which is this piece here, and it actually goes all the way down. So it's the full, full pattern, pattern piece here, the full size of the bag. Okay, and then uh, you're going to have the exterior slip pocket pattern piece, which is the piece used for cutting out these this pocket. And then if you turn the bag over. This is your top zipper panel, so that's the section that goes at the top here. Your middle zipper panel, which is in between the two zippers. And then the lower zipper panel, which is this part here. Now you'll notice that these are just rectangles, they're not angled, and the reason why is it's much more forgiving if we just attach these as rectangle pieces and then we, we're going to trim them down uh, using the, the main body pattern piece so that they uh, have the proper shape. And then the last piece that you have is the lining top band. And that's this piece here that you see on the inside. Now you're going to use the main body pattern piece to cut out a few things. You're going to also, you'll see it has two dash lines. So the lining fold line and the slip pocket fold line. So when you're cutting your interior lining pieces, that's these pieces right here that you're installing your pockets in inside the bag. You're going to actually fold the pattern piece at that top dash line and then you're going to use this portion to cut the lining pieces on the fold. Then you'll see the slip pocket fold line, you're going to fold this pattern piece once again and use this portion to cut out these interior slip pockets and hopefully you can see these these two pockets here, you're going to use this, this portion here to cut those out. Okay. Now the rest of the pieces are all cut to measurements. So that's the gusset, the strap, uh, the zipper pocket lining pieces for the exterior and the interior. All of that is cut to measurements and that's all on your cutting chart. Make sure that you're cutting the right size for the type of the size of bag you're making. So it's written very clearly, small size or large size. Make sure that you're cutting the right, the right ones. So I'm going to go through all of my pieces that I've cut out. And I'm going to separate them in exterior and lining pieces. So for the exterior, very simple, I have my shoulder strap. Now I've given a suggestion for the length to cut. If you want to make it longer or shorter, that's up to you. I'm following the what I've used uh, in the cutting chart. So this is my shoulder strap piece. And my two exterior gusset pieces. So I'm using this blue, dark blue cork. Um, it probably looks darker in the video than it really is. Um, so that's two pieces for my gusset. And I cut according to the small size measurements. Uh, now for my other exterior pieces. So this is going to be my main exterior fabric. And I have here my top zipper panel, my middle zipper panel, and then the lower zipper panel. And that was cut using the pattern piece. Okay, and I just set those aside. And for those zipper pockets, those two exterior zipper pockets, I have four lining pieces. Okay, so everything that I've just showed you as well, I've gone ahead and cut the matching woven interfacing and it's already fused to the wrong side. Now for the other side of the bag, I have here my main body piece cut in my uh, 
my my exterior fabric and then I have two of the exterior slip pocket pieces the exterior fabric and this is going to be my lining fabric and then I have my faux piping piece which I cut out in the cork okay so those are all my exterior pieces and they all have woven interfacing fused to the wrong side the only thing I haven't done yet is fuse my uh, my fusible fleece and I'm going to show you um, and the reason why I didn't fuse it yet is because I, I need to we're going to trim some of the seam allowance out of those pieces and I wanted to do that with you okay so for the lining pieces so I'm going to take this because I want to show you again how I cut all these pieces now for the lining I have two lining top band pieces and that's these pieces here these are the pieces that are going to have the magnetic snaps installed so though I cut those out of cork you don't have to use cork if you want to use lining fabric you can go ahead and use lining fabric the only thing I'm going to suggest is that where you're going to install your magnetic snaps that you reinforce this with a stabilizer okay and then I have two lining pieces so these two pieces I'm going to show you I use the main body pattern piece I cut it at lining fold line and then I cut those on the fold so there's two of those and they have woven in facing on the wrong side I then fold it again at the slip pocket fold line and I cut out my two lining pieces for my slip pocket and they already have woven interfacing fused on the wrong side okay that's it for those and then my zipper pocket pieces these are cut to measurements using the cutting chart I have my interior zipper facing piece and then my two interior zipper pocket lining pieces and then the last lining pieces are my gusset pieces okay so those are exactly the same size as the exterior gusset pieces just this time they're in lining fabric uh, with woven interfacing okay so I'm going to get my fuse my fusible fleece pieces and I'm going to show you where to trim and how to fuse those okay so I'm going to go through the uh, uh, there's a one piece of Peltex you need to cut and the fusible fleece pieces now you're going to need to use your judgment a tiny little bit here I am using cork and it's somewhat it's obviously it's thicker than cotton but depending on how structured you want your bag you may or may not want to add um, fusible fleece to uh, your gusset now obviously you cannot fuse interfacing to cork you're not supposed to apply high heat to it so what I'm going to do is uh, and I'm going to show this during the assembly when I'm assembling my gusset I'm definitely going to use the Peltex piece that is uh, at the bottom of the cutting chart it's called bottom interfacing I'm using Peltex you can use whatever you like um, so I'm going to be using this piece to reinforce the bottom now because I don't want to fuse interfacing to my cork I am going to go ahead and I'm going to cut out the fusible fleece now if you're not using cork or vinyl for your exterior gusset you definitely want to cut out the fusible fleece pieces however depending on how structured you like your bag you can uh, cut it out and use it or not and this time you're going to actually just fuse it to the wrong side of your uh, gusset lining pieces okay so I've gone ahead and done that I've cut out the two pieces and I'm not going to make you sit through me fusing them but what you might want to do just to avoid bulk in your seams is you might want to cut the seam allowance on the shorter sides just so that there's less bulk uh, when you're sewing because you're going to sew these gusset pieces together just so there's less bulk at the seam and also at the top edge of your bag for top stitching so I'm going to trim on both shorter sides and then fuse them centered on the wrong side okay now for our the exterior where we have our sorry I'm just gonna grab all the pieces so these are the pieces that I have for my exterior the side of the bag that has 
um, the two zipper pockets. So I have cut out a matching piece of fleece for each of these. Now, I don't want it to be bulky uh, at the seams where I've sewn, I've attached these pieces to my zipper. So what I'm going to do is, for the fleece piece for the top zipper panel, I'm going to trim away the seam allowance along the bottom and then I'm going to fuse it to the wrong side making sure that you're leaving a gap here where you're going to attach your zipper. For the middle zipper panel piece I'm going to trim along the top and the bottom and then I'm going to fuse it to the wrong side so you're going to have a gap here and here along the entire length and that's just to remove the bulk along the zipper. Now, this is a personal preference. If you, if you, you want the ex added structure of the fleece, you can go ahead and not trim the seam allowance and fuse it. But for me, I like it to be nice and, and crisp along the zipper, so I'm going to actually uh, trim it out. Now, for the last piece, the lower zipper panel, I'm just going to trim here along this top edge, and then when I fuse it to the wrong side, there's going to be uh, a gap here where there's no fleece. And then the last piece of uh, fusible fleece is the one for the main body. So that's the full piece on the other side. And I'm going to leave it as is, except that I'm just going to trim a tiny bit here along the top so that uh, when I'm top stitching in the last steps that it's not too bulky along that top edge. Especially uh, here at the side seams where you your, you've attached to your gusset. It may get a little bit bulky, so uh, definitely I think it helps to trim along the top a little bit and then you'll fuse it to the wrong side and you should have a gap here along the top. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fuse all the fleece pieces to my exterior pieces and then we're going to move on to the next video and start our exterior assembly.